This is a list of the top 10 Unity assets that I have found specifically to help you make your games more easily and more efficiently. But first, I want to thank Unity, the sponsor of this video. As a part of Unity's spring sale, every single asset in this video is 50% off right now, but two of them will be going on sale for 70% off, so stick around to the end to hear more about that. I think by far the best way to kick off this list is with Odin Inspector and Serializer. Odin Inspector is a tool to help you make better tools. You will notice that right out of the gate, it changes a few of the layouts in your inspector. Your lists are going to have a nicer look to them. And your enums will automatically now have a search bar at the top to help you when you have a lot of enum values. But for me, there are two big reasons why I chose Odin. The first is its serialization system. You cannot, for example, serialize a dictionary in your classic mono behavior. But if we change this to a serialized mono behavior, now we can. With Odin's serialization system, you can serialize just about anything, though they are very upfront that you want to be careful with this and that it does slow down the serialization process. The main reason I love this tool so much, though, is the attributes. Just a few quick examples of my favorite use cases would be validation, so that I know something is required, changing the color of certain fields, easily create groups, and maybe add a suffix on the end, hide certain elements based on condition logic, Turn enums into a list of buttons. Create boxed groups just so that things stand out a little nicer. Add a color palette to any color field. And easily create your own color palettes, of course. By adding this child game objects only attribute, we get this little toggle here that will show us all the options we need to fill that field from child game objects. And of course, we can easily add buttons as well. There are many, many, many more to help make your life easier. Number two is Edgar Pro, which is the best procedural level generator I have ever worked with. So this can be used for top-down or side-scrollers, though all of my experience with this tool has been with top-down, because this is the tool I use to create the levels in my game Samurado. So let me show you how it works. You create individual rooms, and then store them as prefabs. You create corridors, if you want them, to connect those rooms together. Those are going to be placed based on the position of doors that you set. There's an easy mode for that that'll just place them wherever based on a margin. Or you can have fine grain control over exactly where the door is placed. Then you build your level graph. Each block in here can be a specific room you built, or it can choose from a random list of rooms, or pick a random room from a random list of room lists. So what you've essentially got is a really nice way to build procedural worlds that give your players unique experiences every time they play, but you have complete control over how everything is pieced together. For example, I have this room where I need a definitive entrance and exit. There cannot be any randomness involved because of how this room is designed. That functionality is built right into this tool. And what's especially nice is the generator script has this nice flow of what it calls its post-processing tasks. So you can chuck anything in here that you need, and they'll run in order before opening your scene, so you can have all your game logic good to go once the scene loads. It's extremely intuitive. The creator is very active on his Discord and has answered all my questions the same day that I asked them. I would recommend this to anyone wanting to add procedural levels into their game. Number three is all-in-one sprite shader. This is exactly what it sounds like, and it's an extremely useful tool that will make creating effects for your game so much easier. You'll see on my material, it's just a massive list of effects divided between color effects and UV effects. You can combine any or all of them together. They are compatible with the animator, or of course you can use tweening libraries to animate them as well. And it has some really nice effects. What I like is that it has some effects that you normally only see in post-processing for the whole screen rather than just for individual sprites. There's only a performance cost on effects that are enabled. And what I really like about this approach is that you'll automatically have fewer draw calls because you'll end up needing a lot less materials. And you can easily enable things like Zwrite and GPU instancing as well. Number four is the all-in-one VFX toolkit. And this is made by the same creators of the all-in-one sprite shader asset. So some of the workflow is going to look familiar. And you get a lot when you buy this tool. First, you will get the particle system helper, this is a component you add to your particle systems, and it's designed to help you make particles more efficiently and with fewer clicks. If you make a lot of particles that have a very similar base, then you'll love the ability to be able to create presets. And it comes with an awesome all-in-one VFX shader. 
Very, very similar to how the other asset worked for sprites, except it's all very tailored to particle systems. Now, for me personally, I really enjoy making particles, but what usually holds me back from being able to create great particle systems is a lack of textures. This asset comes with hundreds of textures. You've got normals, gradients, noise textures, and a huge selection of shapes and other various things to help you start making beautiful particles quickly. And it has this window that allows you to create your own normal maps, color gradients, atlases, and noise textures as well. It comes with 55 VFX prefabs to help you get started really quickly as well. And at number five, we have the Quantum Console. Having a console available while developing your game can make it so much easier to test things. It can also assist in debugging as well. And if you include it in your build, it can be a really fun way to give players access to cheat codes as well. I found this asset really nice and easy to set up and get going. Drag in the prefab, make sure you have an event system in your scene, and you're good to go. You can resize it and customize it as you like. And you'll notice that it already has a full list of commands built right in. Let's say I want to slow down time. So we just type in that command and a value, and it just works. It also has a really nice autocomplete built in, so I can just tab to complete that command and then type in my value. All the keyboard shortcuts and these theme values are available in these scriptable objects, so it's really easy to change things. Now, of course, with an asset like this, the real power comes in when you build your own commands. As a simple example, I'd love to be able to give my character a key more easily here. After we add the namespace, we just add the command attribute. This works on fields and properties too, by the way, not just methods. And now we can give our players some keys really easily in play mode on the fly using a console which is going to make testing so much easier. Or again, you can use it to create really fun cheat codes if you want. Number six is Game Music Treasury. Having original scores composed for your game is amazing if you have the budget or you have the time to learn how to do it yourself. But I am a big believer that having a library of high quality music to choose from is really convenient and can save you a lot of time, money, and stress. I have found that having tracks ready to go that I can use in my devlog videos to be really, really useful. And the music in this asset is really high quality. You can check out everything on the store page right here. Let me quickly play a few of my favorites. There is a good range of single tracks, variants, loops, and live musician tracks as well. And you'll notice that the one that's on sale is volume two, but as soon as you purchase this volume, then volume one will become free on the asset store for you. Number seven is text animator for Unity. If you have any dialogue in your game, this asset is something you're probably gonna want. There's already a really impressive list of games that chose to use this asset in their game. And after you start using it, it's really easy to see why. There are two main reasons. One is the text animation. Add the text animator component to your object that's holding your text. And now you can animate your text using custom rich text tags. Unity already has rich text tags built in, so this really doesn't change your workflow very much. It just expands your options. There's quite a good list of tags to choose from with this asset. And you can build your own too, by the way. And you can see once we enter that in, it'll work in play mode, or I can preview it in the editor here as well. And if you want to tweak the effect just a little bit, they have modifiers you can just add right into the tag in order to change it. So you have your choice of looping animation tags, appearing tags, and disappearing tags. Those last two only take effect when text either appears or disappears. Now, the second awesome thing about this asset is the typewriter component. It's pretty common to have your dialogue typed in character by character, and this will handle all of that for you very easily. But the reason it looks so nice is because the typewriter component automatically incorporates those appearance and disappearance tags when it types them in. There's also plenty of pluggable events so that you can easily do things like play sounds when the text appears, for example. Number eight is behavior designer, behavior trees for everyone. 
Behavior trees are an industry standard way of creating complex AI or behavior in your game, especially in the AAA industry. Sometimes good project design comes down to using the right tool for the job. This tool becomes especially useful when you want to create complex behavior, iterate quickly, and have a nice way to debug that logic. If you go to Tools, Behavior Designer, Editor, it's going to open up the Behavior Editor. And from here, you can start creating some behavior visually. The logic runs from top to bottom, then left to right. So here are all the tasks that come built in. It's quite a lot. And as you add them in, you can see there's a nice little description down here to help you figure out what they do. And the power with this tool really comes in when you start creating your own tasks that work with your game logic. And it's surprisingly intuitive to do because you just inherit from action. And the workflow is going to feel really familiar because it gives you a bunch of override functions like on awake, on update, on behavior complete, and many, many more. So the way that you script things for this tool is going to feel very familiar. And anything that's serialized in these scripts is going to show up in the inspector for that node. Number nine is the Odin validator. This is an add-on to Odin inspector, so you do need Odin in order to get this one. And this tool's only purpose is to help make your life easier by discovering errors in your project and helping you fix them quickly. There is a whole bunch of stuff that it can find right out of the gate by itself, but what's really cool is it works with this list of attributes from Odin Inspector. So as a simple example, if I want to keep this value here no lower than 1, I can add in this attribute. And if at any point this value changes, Odin Validator will show an error message here. If I click on it, it's going to highlight the asset that's given me a problem, and it updates live as well. So as soon as we fix it, this updates. You can also scan your entire project at the click of a button. And what's cool is when you have bulk errors, you can do bulk fixes. I particularly like that it has the option to run a validation scan when you choose to build the game. And if it finds any errors, it'll stop the build and give you a chance to fix them. Number 10 is Animancer Pro. Unity's built-in mechanism can get really complicated really quickly. And it can be really hard to debug issues, which means there's just a lot of trial and error. And you have to rely on strings, which can be a pain when you want to change things. Animancer is a nice alternative to Mechanim for a few key reasons. You can directly see what's happening inside the component instead of the animator window, and you can easily expose everything to see what's going on. You can actually just directly reference animation clips in the inspector and play those, which means if you have sets of animations, you can put them inside a scriptable object and play them from there. You do not need an animator controller. So for those of you who like to code your own animation systems, you can do that. But the component visuals will make debugging easier. Although if you've already put in the work into an animator controller, that is still supported by Animancer. So you are not forced to change workflows. On top of blend trees, Animancer offers what's called mixers, which do the same thing, but give you finer control over the details. It also has some really convenient types that I just feel should be included in an animation system. Two of these assets will be in the flash sale, which means 70% off during the spring sale. Game Music Treasury will have a flash sale on April 23rd. And Animancer Pro will have a flash sale on May 6th. And a link to all of these assets can be found in the description below. That's all I got.